Hey everyone, this is Shakur and Shayu's final machine learning project called MalURL. As the World Wide Web becomes more and more deeply integrated into every aspect of human life, the threat of criminal attacks from a malicious website becomes larger as well. A malicious website could not only compromise hardware, access sensitive information in one's device, it could also per perpetrate financial fraud. Before a user enters a malicious website, they must click on a uniform resource locator URL, which gives them a chance to evaluate the website before entering. In this project, we plan to use the URL and different aspects of the URLs we treat as features to train this algorithm. The approach is largely based on the assumption that the distribution of the features for the positive and negative examples will be different enough for a classification algorithm to produce fruitful results. All the features obtained from the content of the website can improve classification results significantly. However, in an effort to not access the websites to protect the user's computer and to save runtime, we do not plan to use those features. For our data set, we had 10,000 URLs, 5,000 of which are malicious and 5,000 are benign. These are some of the databases that we pulled from for malicious URLs. And for benign URLs, we pulled from the Majestic Million. To summarize our project, we break down every URL into 14 main features. The first 13 features are those related to lexicographic or host-based attributes. The 14th feature value is a pre-prediction of the URL as malicious or benign using a TF-IDF classifier with logistic regression. And then we use a second layer of classifiers to make predictions of the URLs based on the feature values of each URL. And then we use online machine learning classifier to make a prediction of one new data point, update the model with that data point, and then make a prediction of the next new data point so as to improve the performance of the model at a larger scale. So in terms of features, this is, these are what we covered. Lexographic features. Average length of tokens, longest token, number of levels, number of tokens. This is how we define a token. When we break down the entire URL into just the words that it contains without the symbols, that is dash, slashes, full stops, any of those, any punctuation marks, just the words, those are what we define as tokens. And then we look at the path and host of the URLs. We look at the number of tokens in path, the length of the path, and also the length of the host. We also covered the online ranking and site popularity through rank of the URL on Alexa ranking and also the rank of country that hosts the URL. So in terms of security sensitive features, we discovered that a lot of malicious URLs had the following words, confirm, account, banking, secure, eBay is API, login, sign in, verification, and so on. We realized that if a URL contain these words, and the higher the number of these words that a URL contain, the more likely it would be a malicious website. And then we look at if the URL is executable. Some of the URLs have .exe existing in their tokens. It's not very common, but it's also highly indicative of malicious URLs. Some URLs also support an IP address rather than a usual host name. Malicious websites just want to use the IP addresses instead of a host name so they can dodge blacklists and other anti-malware techniques that are, in, uh, that are employed by the browser. And then we look at the autonomous system number of the website. Lastly, we, co we made the 14th feature as a pre-prediction by TF-IDF with logistic regression. This is an idea that's never been covered in any other research paper about trying to detect malicious website to just the URLs. This is a very common approach in natural language processing and document classification. TFIDF is a method for emphasizing words that occur frequently in a given document, while at the same time de-emphasizing words that occur frequently in many documents. TF stands for term frequency. It is the number of times term T appears in a document divided by total number of terms in the document. And IDF stands for Inverse Document Frequency. It is the natural log of total number of documents divided by number of documents with term T in them. Once we have the values from TF-IDF, we take those values and input them into a logistic regression model. 
which either gives us a plus one, which is significator of a malicious website, or a minus one, which is significator of a benign website. Using just the TFID of a logistic regression on our training data, we got an accuracy rate of somewhere around 60 to 70%. We then take this plus one or minus one as one of the features in our feature list. This is an example of a mail URL. Now if you see closely, the first thing that you might notice is that the host name is excruciatingly long. No other host name that you might have come across of a benign website would contain as many tokens. Another thing that you might notice is this has no path. There are three top level domains inside one website. While it is common for several websites to have a .com and .au to redirect it, it is never common for a benign website to have two levels of .com and one .au. Also, the first .com has a word following it, that's subscriptions, which is another indicator of a malicious website. As for the classifiers, we use two levels of classifications, as we mentioned earlier. Pre-classification with TFIDF with logistic regression, and final classification where we classify all the features all together using traditional machine learning algorithms like random forest classifiers and support vector machine classifiers. We also used online machine learning in this project. So instead of training locally with a large data set, we train the model incrementally with one new data point and then another new data point. We first tried a passive aggressive classifier, which didn't work out very well for us. And then we came up with the idea of stochastic gradient descent classifier with loss function log, which gives logistic regression a probabilistic classifier. We did not realize that this has been used before uh, when we came up with this method. However, the way we use stochastic gradient descent classifier with our pre-classification layer is different from all the previous work. Random forests are ensembles of randomized decision trees. They are popular for classification and regression tasks. Random forests achieve competitive predictive performance and are computationally efficient to train and test. We use random forest classifier and extra trees classifier from the sklearn ensemble library. We also use support vector machine classifier. We cover SVM in class. We set C equals to 3 and gamma equals to 1 divided by 250. And we use the cross file score, that's another function we uh, got from sklearn, and set the number of folds equals to 10. We got very good success rates for the two methods. For random forest, we got 98% of accuracy. And for support vector machine, we got a 91% accuracy. Because the success rate we obtain from random forests is already very high, it will be very difficult to improve the 98 percentile by online machine learning. Therefore, we took a subset of the training data and used SGD classifier loss equals log instead to train our model locally, so as to have a relatively low success rate. After online training with a few extra URLs, the success rate increases. This is the SGD classifier. In particular, we used partial fit, which allows us to do mini batch training or online training. For optimal results, we normalize the feature vectors to have mean zero and variance one. This is a screenshot of the incremental fitting of one data point. And we got an improvement on performance. Before online training, the success rate is 88 percentile. And after online training, the success rate is 89.15 percentile. We've encountered a lot of problems during our project, and we've managed to overcome them. We've implemented some really interesting algorithms, and we've learned a lot. However, we're still very aspirational about where we could take this project. And to start off, we want to increase the size of our training set. There are over a couple billion URLs around the world, and our training set is only of 10,000. We want to increase the size of this training set, which would need more computational energy, computation power and more time. And we want to add more features so as to further increase the accuracy. We also want to implement automation of obtaining new URLs as a Google Chrome plugin. Thank you for watching our presentations. If you have any questions or comments, please contact Xiaoyue at, at xiaoyue.gong at nyu.edu or me at ss9131 at nyu.edu. Thank you. Thank you.